Hi, and welcome along to the All Guns Blazing podcast brought to you today by Manscaped. Um, don't forget you can get 20% off this great product. Just use the code AGB. As it says here, your balls will thank you unless you're an Arsenal player. Maybe Manscaped, you need to send these lot, you know, a couple of boxes of these because I saw no balls from any Arsenal player. Um, but big up Manscaped, great product, by the way. Um, and you can get 20% off of that. Just click the link in the description. But where do we start, DT? It was a horror show. A horror show. I think somebody did an interview last night. They described it as a nil-nil thrashing. <laughs> wow. You know, and, and I mean, basically, Villarreal, I don't even know if they, they hardly had a shot. They did nothing, really. They didn't have to do nothing. Didn't need to. They needed a nil-nil. All we needed to do was score one goal. But from the game started, it was slow, it was lethargic, it was pathetic. And we are out of the Europa League. I don't think I've calmed down since, you know, I've done my interview with you after the game. I've never been more disgusted and hurt. And I've, like, listen, man, we've had loads of supporters, everyone of any club has. And this is right up there with me, right up there. And I've seen some absolute horror shows and I've been going since mid 80s and I've seen some real bad ones but that for me just everything behind it the club in general this is the thing it's not a bad game it's not a you know few bad performances it's not about being knocked out of a cup competition it's about the club in general the club as a whole I don't recognise this club anymore Robbie I don't recognise it I don't know it I don't want to know it I don't like it I actually hate it that's a bit strong. No, 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 no. I hate what this club has become. I hate it. What has it become? Poisonous. Completely rotten. Something that nobody would want to touch with a barge pole. Just everything about it. I hate it. I don't recognise it. And I've said that. And, you know, maybe my memories are always from Highbury and everything else. And unbelievable memories but when you get told that moving to a new stadium is going to be beneficial for the future of Arsenal Football Club it's going to make you a European superpower it's going to make you compete and be what your dreams want you to be and yet it's actually been what nightmares are made of do you know what I mean it's just every single bit of this club stinks. It just seeps out of every pore. I hate every bit of it. I hate going to the games when we were going before and it was getting like that as well. But your love for the club and what you have in your heart will always drag you back. And that is one of the things that people like Stan Kroenke has always relied on. That people use their hearts over their heads. We all buy the new merchandise. We're all guilty of it. I'm wearing it. We all buy it. We buy our kids it. We'll sit there and say, we're never going to buy that again. We're not going to do that. So we're as culpable for allowing it to happen. But at what point do you sit there and say, nah, not anymore. You need your club back. We need our club back. Because that is just rotten. I hate it. I can't stress enough to you, Robbie, how much I hate this club. People are not even mocking us anymore as rival fans they're being sympathetic that's when you know you are at your lowest point ever when people don't want to banter you anymore because even they feel sorry for what they're seeing and it's the fans I, don't deserve this no, the Arsenal fans don't deserve it. it's like you said you know what I mean we were sold a dream I remember, we sold I, a dream. I remember Ivan Gazidis's words when he compared it to being able to compete and his words were specific, Bayern Munich. Mm. We wouldn't compete with Bayern Munich's academy, let alone their first team. We are a million miles away from being anything that we were ever told we would be. We moved to the Emirates to be financially bigger and better. And yet we've got clubs 
in the Premier League with all due respect lower down than us and we're low at the moment but lower down in terms of their stature size and everything that go out in transfer windows and spend more money than us and then when we have had money we've spent it wrong we've give average players astronomical wages and it's just been more than a decade of decline season after season after season after season and I've had this discussion with so many people and we've talked about the end of Arsene Wenger's reign. And people will say now, well, this is what you wished for. Arsene Wenger was still culpable for the demise of where we are now at the end of his reign. If he would have left after beating Hull in the cup final, but he didn't. Couldn't get but the you, manager in. you know in. what? That's not Arsene and Wenger's fault. No, no, no. I'm not saying... What I'm saying is, what was going on on the pitch was all to do with the man. It's, it's yeah, been Arsene, it's you, been Unai, it's been Mikel. You know, I look on it. You know, I look on it. Right? You say you should have left. Mm -hmm. well, why would you leave? I mean, you're getting paid big money. Mm -hmm. You, and not only that, I think probably not even just money for him no more. He's just got it in his head, and he's thinking, I can still do this. Mm -hmm. I can still turn this around. But that's where you need a stronger owner. You need your owner now. Mm -hmm to turn around and say, Arsene, you've been a great servant to this club. You, you've made this club. You know, there's been other managers before you, obviously, that have made this club as well. But you, in recent times, have made this club into the brand mm. and, and into the powerhouse that is, is right now. However, time now to move on to someone else. And there was Guardiolas and Klops out there that they could have moved on to. Now, that's what an ambitious owner would have done. Yeah. An ambitious owner who cares and who's at the club watching what's going on on a regular basis, he would have been like, I can see that Arsene now, he's struggling a bit, you know, he's, he's a bit on decline now, it's time to change it up. Mm. But you see, we had our owners, they, their mindset was different. Their mindset was, well, you know what? This guy gets us in the top four every single year. Yep. You remember when he, you remember the owners, you know, Arsene Wenger said top four is like a trophy because oh. that's what they wanted. And they made money. And we see anybody who needs evidence, right? Just look at this Super League thing, which by the way now, how embarrassing is that? That we were there shooting off our mouth about a Super League. We can't even, we're not even going to be in Europe next year. But that's why they wanted the Super League. Because they wanted that guarantee that every single season they would be at the they top would be table. at they'd be at the top table, even though they don't deserve to do it. Not now, what are they going to do? Because to get back to that top table, they're going to have to spend some huge amount of money. They're going to have to. They, they, you're not going to get back to that top table with Mikel Arteta. We've seen it now. That's two seasons in a row. Forget the FA Cup. That's two seasons in a row. He's finished way off. Remember, we wouldn't even be in the Europa League this season had it not been for that FA Cup win, <laughs> right? We're way off. Mm. Now, if they're ambitious, as they told us a couple of weeks ago, we've got ambitions to win the league and challenge for the league, then Mikel Arteta has to go. I'm sorry, he's, he, he's, he's had a, um, a go at this. Fans tried to back him. Fans tried to back the process. The process is broken. Yeah. Right, I look at Mikel Arteta in that game and I'm like, it seems to me like you can't motivate the players. If that's a semi-final and that appalling performance that I saw, we only needed to win 1-0 at home. Slow, lethargic, this persistence of playing every single thing out from the back, predictable, you know, um, Leno kicks it to... Partey who then kicks it in um, either left or right to Bellerin or Tierney who then tries to play it down the line to Saka then it gets lost and then it's back at us again never in we, a circle we, we, we barely got out of our half in most of the game we got players like Aubameyang and that are getting no service there's no pattern of play every week there's a different team players are coming into the team What? why was Bellerin playing? What has he done? We've got Cedric. He's been left out. And Bellerin in recent games. And we played Callum Chambers. Now all of a sudden, Bellerin's back. 
it don't nothing that Arteta has been doing has been making any sense. On what basis? The game, the, the the actual tie was lost in the first leg when Mikel Arteta decided to play a false number nine. Remember, he changed when, his formation for this one as well. He changed his formation for that one, at, but the false number nine, where we we our midfielders have barely scored a goal, not just this season, last season as well. Why are you playing a false number nine and relying on midfielders to get goals? That's where we, we, we lost that tie. This, and oh. it was absolutely shocking. It was lethargic. And I just look at Arteta and I'm like, you're not getting the best out of some of the top players. Why is Martinelli not playing? What has Martinelli done to Mikel Arteta? Then I start to look at it even more and study things up and say, well, remember what Saliba said? when he went on loan, he said, all right, fair enough. I know I was sort of coming back off of an injury and that, but I never had a chance to prove myself to this manager. Puts too much trust in the wrong people. He goes on loan and then he immediately gets player of the month in France and has had a good season. No, just, it's just... Robbie, look, I don't... The situation with him, and it's kind of like, it's been boiling away for a few weeks and I watch... And there's a lot of times where you can blame the players for some of the performances this season. And then over recent weeks, I've been sitting and watching and watching and seeing what's going on. And there's only one person to blame for the performances and that's the manager. You only have to look at what we're doing, the, the way that we're being set up, the tactics, just every bit of it just don't look right. It just, it looks like he's just, just hoping, just kind of going, I try that. Maybe it'll work. And I got lucky. Bellerin should never have been brought in the team. Bellerin should never even wear a shirt for Arsenal Football Club again. Stop giving me all this bullshit about him being a great ambassador. Yes, he plants trees. He's vegan. He's this, he's that. I couldn't give a fucking shit, to be honest with you. He plays for Arsenal. I want a right back. I want a right back that can actually play the position, not somebody that cuts down trees and donates and does all this. I don't care what you do off the pitch. Do what you want off the pitch when you can perform on it. All right, because too many of these players do too much off the pitch and they don't do enough on it. You're employed to do your job on the pitch. Whatever you do after, do whatever you want. If you can perform on the pitch, go and dress up as a clown every weekend and go out and do, do whatever, I don't care. Do whatever you want. But these players, they don't. You see it all the time. There's always pissing around going on in training, silly training videos, all this shit. We don't want to see it. None of us want to see it. Because what do you see? You see a weak mentality within the squad and you're looking at it and going, they're even bothering or they're just taking the piss when they go to training. Like turning up and just taking the piss constantly. And that's the way it looks. So you go from the Bellerin situation and then the bit that done it for me was, why are you taking a Bamiang off? <laughs> you need a goal. There's 10 minutes to go. Don't give me none of this like malaria and everything else, all right? Aubameyang That's the played the game. game. There's 10 minutes to go. 10 minutes. He just hit the post. The post. Literally just you hit the post. You need a goal. Do you go out on a whimper at nil-nil or do you say, let's risk conceding a goal Brave. by going for it? Just go gun out. Guess what we did? Go out on a whimper. Because they'll probably go, well, you know mm. what? We kept a clean sheet. Like somebody said in the interviews, they said he took off the guy that saved his job last season. It's in the semi final and final, it was a Bamiang that saved Mikel Arteta's skin. Can't defend it. Right? He just hit the. We, listen, he hadn't had a brilliant game, but he was the most likely player that would score a goal. He, he'd hit the post in the first half, he hit the post again in the second half. I see. If, it, if oh. you're going to get that one chance, you know, like we always say, I think we'll get one chance before this game finishes. You want it to fall to Aubameyang and you take him off. Even in the it last was seconds, criminal. what was it? Five minutes injury time? I think we're about three minutes into it or something. And we're passing across the lines. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? Has nobody actually told you we have to score a goal? You're playing patterns across the line. And I'm like, what are you doing? That's what we did all game. Send Leno up, throw the kitchen sink, just do everything. I would rather we did that and they broke away 
and scored, knowing we literally threw everything. But we literally went out just like, oh well. Like, no, Robbie, man. And I'll tell you, the, the, the thing that's starting to really become apparent with me is that towards the end of Arsene Wenger's reign at Arsenal, right, there was interviews that he used to do where you used to watch him and go, stop talking. Stop, stop. You're making it worse. He used to do interviews and used to sit there going, oh, what? He, he would react to things. You remember the why you look at me? Mm. Those type of things. And you knew that he was cracking. You knew something was, mm. he wasn't his old self. That weren't the Arsene Wenger that joined from the beginning of Arsenal where he just looked like, mm. like nobody Confident. could phase him. He was just the man. Whereas that just looked like somebody that was broken. I'm seeing it with Mikel now. Mm. That's what I'm seeing. I watch his interview after this game and he's saying that over the two legs, we deserve to win. No, we didn't. Seriously? We didn't deserve to win. Go, go, go and get Mikel. What? No, we, this is what I'm saying. Get Mikel tested for drugs. I'm not even taking the piss <laughs> because if you genuinely believe that over two legs, we deserve to win, Dude, you need to, to get tested. The, Villarreal should have won that leg in the first half of the first game, right? They were all over us. And even when it went down we to got, 10 minutes, it took the likes of Bern Leno making them safe got, to stop 3-0. Yeah, and, and even, even the penalty we got wasn't was a penalty. touch and go, right? We did not deserve to win we had a life over life. the two legs. We brought them home. And the slow and that can that instruction to play in that manner can only come from the manager, right? Can only come from him. And as I said, decision making. You got to start scrutinising all his decisions now. You got to start scrutinising the Gwenduzi situation. Was that right? Saliba was that right? The way he's handled certain players, has he handled them in the right way? You've seen all season a player will play, he's, looks like he's doing, you know, I've seen it a few times with Lacazette. He had a great game, a couple of good games, and he's dropped. Martinelli, what has Martinelli done? I don't get it. I just don't. What has this kid, the most exciting, or one of the most exciting, him and Saka kids at this club, every time he comes on the pitch, gives 100%, closing down, can score goals, is good in the air. Tricky as a man in a match against Newcastle. You need a goal, you bring him on with about 15, 10, 15 minutes left. What? No. And I'm sorry, you know what I mean? When people say, oh, well, uh, somebody was saying to me the other day, but yeah, Robbie, if we was to get rid of Arteta, what if he goes elsewhere and then he's successful? Then he goes elsewhere and he's successful. We can't afford to wait on that. If spots and maybes, man. And if spots and maybes. And even when the, the, the... Let's go right back to the appointment of Arteta. Let's be real now. And we've all tried to back the process. I've tried to back the process. I've tried to get behind Mikel Arteta. But I'm sorry, to play where we are right now, if you're a big club, being run like a big club, he go and keep his job. Mm. When he got the job, I remember it quite clearly. Remember the, you know, the van going up the, going up in the middle of the night. That was after a bad defeat, going up in the middle of the night to his house to yeah, beg him yeah, to yeah. come down. I yeah. remember that. Yeah. And I remember that. I it remember, was a defeat to Man City. Yeah. And I remember a lot of fans thinking, Arteta, oh, seriously? At this club? At this stage? Uh, it was... There, if, if you had done a survey at that time, you would have probably found 10% of people that would say, okay, yeah, I, I like this signing. Most other fans were like, we need an experience, maybe an Ancelotti, maybe a, you know, um, Allegri, things like that. No, Arteta wasn't even coming into anybody's thinking, mm. right? They went and brought in a novice. And as somebody said to me the other day, if Guardiola had left, suddenly decided that I'm leaving Man City, do you think City would have appointed Arteta? No. As their next manager? They wouldn't, would they? If he was no. that great, as what as people said. He's, he needed to go and do another job first. Maybe in the championship. Or maybe a club lower down in, you know, 
Prove yourself there then. But you can't come and learn on the job at Arsenal, particularly the state of Arsenal at the no. moment, where it needs somebody of vast experience who's going to come in because he's not going to get the support of the board. And then let's, not just Arteta, Edu. And some of the signings, the, the Willie Ann signings. Again, when it was made, everyone was like, Willie Ann. But then they took, again, us as fans, that's what we like. People like to criticise us. Oh, bet you want your team to lose. Blah, 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 all this rubbish. Us as fans still said, well, all right, maybe William could do a job. But you know, you tried to convince yourself. Yeah. Because you want to get behind your players. But we all knew that was poor. Arsenal as a football club right now has been running to the ground. Every little bit of decision. You look at this last year. Starting off with the summer and some of those signings of Willian, the the Cedric signing, things like that, where people are like, whoa, we got right backs. Why are we, you know? I mean, we signed him. We're not even using him now, right? Oh. Then you look at things like the Ozil situation. When Ozil turned round, right, when the pandemic was going on and they told everybody to take a pay cut, when Ozil turned around and said, oh, no, I don't trust these guys. Oh, where's the money going? Right? A lot of people got on his case. But he was right, wasn't he? Yep. When he said, I don't trust these men to, to know where the money's going to go and all stuff like that, right? Ozil left. They laid off 55 people. They borrowed money off the government to keep the, the, the club, um, according to them, to keep afloat. But then you still go and buy a player like William and you put him on 200 grand a week. Who, by the way, we've hardly even played this season because we've realised he's not been good enough. The guy's not even scored a goal for us. Hasn't scored a goal. It's been Dear shocking. God. The decisions of, was it Kia Draption coming in and controlling oh. all the transfers exactly. all of a sudden? It's the same. Listen, it's William just from top to bottom, no plan. <laughs> no planning, Bobby. no nothing. Just Bobby. absolute garbage. So <laughs> it's not a surprise now what we're seeing. The outcome of poor management, poor ownership. This uh, is the result of it, what we're seeing now, that you've got an Arsenal football club that are not even going to be in Europe. And they tried to sneak in through the back way where yeah. you wouldn't have to earn it. Now we know why they wanted that. But maybe, just maybe, the only good thing that could, and we don't know, that could come out of it is Fortune. maybe the Cronkies might turn around and say, well, you know what? We're not going to make no money out of European football next year. Yeah. To get us back into Europe with all the emerging clubs as well as the traditional clubs that get into the top four, we're going to have to spend huge amounts of money. We've already lost loads of money in the pandemic. Let's just sell it, man. Let's yeah. go, get on the phone and call Daniel Ek. See if he's ready. Maybe that could be the own. If that was the outcome of this, then maybe, you know, in a month's time, two months time, me and you could be turning around and say, best thing that ever happened to Arsenal, mm. getting knocked out of the Europa League. Could be. But right now, yeah, it, it just, still hurts to see our team embarrassed. So they are three English clubs in the European competition. We would have made the fourth one. To have an all English final and we it would always be us. Arsenal. It would always it would out. always be us. And Garbage. you know, when even when you're talking about Willian, the guy's on two hundred grand a week and he has the same amount of goals for Arsenal Football Club as me and you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Give me two hundred grand a week, I won't score. It's fine. But it's I'm, like I just it's like when we was talking at the beginning when you said to me about the whole Arteta thing, there's a video of me where I said, like from when Wenger was first leaving, I said, I didn't want Arteta. Nobody did. No one would. But you listen, back him. You back your manager because him. we're football fans and we don't want, we want to back this guy. We want to trust the process. We want to get behind him. But I'm sorry, right? And me, I'm, I'm, you know me already, my stance on all these things. I, I ain't no Arteta in or out. I'm just like, I want to back whoever's in charge to do well. But if you're mm -hmm. not producing, out you go. We got to get someone else in. And you look what Chelsea did. They got rid of a legend in Frank Lampard. Arteta's not a legend at Arsenal. No. You know, he was a decent guy when he was at Arsenal, decent player. Arte Lampard, legend, won everything for them. 
came in, steadied the ship in a tough time for Chelsea. Abramovich said, all right, go. Next seat. Got rid of him. Got rid of him. Results weren't going great. Got rid of him. A lot of the fans, even at the time, were saying, it's too harsh. But look where they are now. Yeah, FA Cup by, final, Champions by League By owners final. that are ambitious because the culture... I mean, I watched Chelsea play the other night and after the game, one of my mates said, Robbie, I'm jealous. I said, I'm not jealous, I'm angry. He said, angry? Mm. He goes, how can you be angry? I said, you know what's making me... Not angry at Chelsea, fair play to Chelsea. Angry They're through to club. the final. I'm angry that we have allowed a club like Chelsea to overtake us in how they've done it. Right, I'm angry that we don't have ambitious owners like what Chelsea have. Mm. Chelsea Football Club have a winning culture around them. They've got a women's team in the Champions League final as well as the men. Even our women's team's going in decline now. Right? That used to be so good. Even that's in decline Robbie, now. Robbie, have you seen our under 23s? Have you seen it? They're, They're in playing decline. They got. I think they've got to draw against West Ham any day now to avoid relegation. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. Like from top to bottom, the whole club is the rotten, club is like you said. Rotten, it's rotten, and, and it rotten. needs new ownership. It needs new leadership. It needs a big change. If we don't have that, Arsenal fans, buckle up. Next year is going to be the same. It's going to be worse. It'd be worse, Robbie, to be fair. Because what I think now, from now to the oh. end of the season, like I said to you, I wasn't even joking in my fan camp when I said I don't want to be involved in none of the last games. Because I don't. If you can sit here right now and you say to me, you know what, DC, Sunday, what do you want to do? Do you want to go out with your family or do you want to come in and watch the game? Bye-bye. I'm going out with my family, mate. See ya. Why am I wasting valuable time? Why am I wasting memories, moments for, with my family? For what? For them, this lot, them. The only memories they're giving me are giving me nightmares. Do you know what I mean? Last weekend, my five-year-old went out and scored six goals in his game. That he should have had him playing here. Yeah, he should have had him. last night. Do you know what I mean? But that give me more pleasure and satisfaction than anything they will ever do. Do you know what I mean? And this is why I say, when people say to me, oh, you're so heavily involved with your team and like, you've really like got involved and like, you're there all the time and, cause I get more from it. Mm. I get more enjoyment. Like, and, it's, and, and, and it's from, it's not just on the pitch. It's just in general how your club's being run. It's just like, it's off-putting. I, when, when I see the way the clubs, and, and particularly the, the most thing that I find the most off-putting is the owners don't care. Where are they? Where are they? They don't care. Where are it, they? This the, is our biggest game exactly, so of the season. Final. Where are you? You are allowed to be in where's the stadium. Stan Kroenke? Where's Stan yeah. Kroenke? All right, if it ain't Stan, where's Josh? What happened the other week? We played Everton. Oh. And Mashiri's there. Mashiri's there. None the of them. Are, none of them are there. At the Emirates. Yeah. So you're telling me, Josh is sitting there, the other week, talking his bullshit on the, you know, the fans forum, the fans forum and everything, about how he wants to come back to London. He wants to do this. I want to come to that. London. Yeah, yeah. Well, this what, is. Where, where were you then? Where were you? In this was our biggest game of the season. Where are you? Where are you? Where is Stan? Where are any of you? Where they, are you? Are you hurting like our every single Arsenal fan that I have spoken to is hurting? Actually, no. Kalechi always comes on after the interviews, mm. sings that he couldn't sing. Everyone's hurting. But everyone's you, but hurting. You say, that, you say that, they probably are hurting as well. Just their pocket. Yeah. And maybe that's that might be hurting. the thing that makes them go. But that's they're not what, hurting. That's where they're hurting. Yeah, but they're not hurting like us. No, they're they not ain't. hurting. They'll they sleep care. tonight. They'll sleep. They don't care. They don't they'll care. They'll get the result. They'll get the result come through and they'll go, oh, does that mean no European football? No. They, they don't care. They don't care. They don't give a shit and, about and, this and, club. And that's the thing that's hurting me even more than the performances on the pitch is there's not, I see no way, well, the only way I, I see of this at the moment is the Daniel Ek bid. I don't know a lot about Daniel Ek. Obviously I know he's the guy, founder of Spotify, 
I love the fact that there's he's got Thierry Henry and guys like that, you know, Vieira, Burkamp involved, and these are guys that care about the club. I saw even before the game last night, I, I went on my Instagram and I saw Kanu sending a message to the players, come on lads, man, we've got, these sort of guys, these, they care, they care like us, it burns them. Ian Wright, I know, will be paining after that performance because these guys care. Mm. But we've got an owner, right, that does not care and then cowardly to me, pushes his son out there and says, right, you deal with it all. But the son don't care either. They're no, not interested. None of, none of them. These are none just billionaires with a load of money. It's what's wrong. It's what's wrong at the moment with English football, mm. right? There's nothing wrong with people investing. But when you've got owners that just don't care and all it is is just making, it's just the because bottom line. Because they don't realise we're not difference. a franchise. Yeah, that's the difference, that's right? The thing. Even when we're talking about the two clubs that are in the Champions League final, that's the difference between them even though they're run by billionaires and our billionaires is that their billionaires do actually care. Abramovich cares. He be, he's at games. He, if he's not at a game, you know he's watching that to find out what's... You know if something like, like what would happen to us tonight, you know in the morning he's on the phone saying, boy, Mikel, I need to talk to you. Right? You know he'd be looking to shake things up to say that, you know what, you see next year, we get, because remember there was that year when Chelsea finished out of Europe. But then, then you know, under Chelsea, they will be plotting to come back. Yeah. Our guys will not be plotting to come back. They won't be. They will not be plotting. They won't when be. they're giving this crap about, oh, we are here to win leagues. Where's the evidence of that? You didn't just turn up last week. Yeah. You've been here for 13 years. Robbie, they think we're idiots. They think yeah, they we do. are idiots. That is the thing. They think that all of this talk and saying all these things will make us go, yeah, you know what? We're going to win the league next year because Josh Cronkey said. I said it already. Fuck off, I said Josh it already. Cronky. I don't care how much money they spend. We need a change of ownership. Do you know what some They come in, they buy, if they buy Haaland, they buy Mbappe in the summer. It means nothing to me. Mm. We need a change of ownership. Massively. I would like to give this guy Daniel Ecker a try. Yeah, why not? Let's give him a try. Let's see what... Because these guys, you know, he said that he'd give more representation on the, the board to fans. I mean, listen, he's talking a good game at the moment. Yeah. But even at the moment, with me not even knowing much about him, I would rather see him in charge than what we have at the moment. The Cronkies need to sell up. Mm. Sell up. You've got no Europe next year, right, to get the income that you want. You already, you know, also already losing hundreds of millions of pounds because of the pandemic. Now there's no, you know, and what did they do? Yeah. <laughs> when they run onto the pitch last night, oh, brand new top. Yeah. New kit. Another one. Another new kit and and Yeah, and, we're and bringing out next new... season's range early. Yeah. yeah, I wonder why. You can uh, shove that up you your know, ass. I'm not even, you know, you know, you're not even saying like the last game. I'm not even interested in going, you know, you can get the 10,000. I'm not even interested, man. No, I, you, I, 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 I never thought I'd feel like that. I'd go, never, I'd go just to boom. I never thought I'd feel like I'd that. I'd go man. just to give them, give them uh, the, the criticism that they deserve. Not abuse, criticism. Because every single one of them deserves criticism. Every single one of them needs sitting down in front of fans and tell them to their face how poor their performances are. That's criticism. That's not abuse. That's telling them straight. Mm. That's not good enough. Not good enough for this club. You sum up... Josh Cronkey, when we had the preseason tour to America, what was it, two years ago be now? Be excited. And he went, oh, be excited. Yeah, I'll be excited when you fuck off. Right? I'll tell you the thing about him. Turned up to Arsenal training and he was wearing a Rams top. Sums you up. You turn up to mm. Arsenal training to meet the management, the players, etc. And you can't even put an Arsenal top on. That might sound like a, a, a small little it's thing, not a small thing, but it's not. If it's you're like, wearing a top, that shows. if you're wearing a top, we're an Arsenal top. Yeah, but you wear, wear the top of another club that you're ploughing billions into. That shows where your heart lies. Then with them. go and do so that. So go and do them. Go, go do them. Do go do them. Go and fucking run Walmart or whatever the fuck it is that all your family run and all that. Just piss off. 
I think this is going to get a lot worse and a lot more toxic now with the fans. And I can actually see this spilling over into violence as well when you see these protests. That's what I can see this going. To the no, point... Let, let, let's hope it don't. No, no, I'm not, I'm not it condoning it. it. Mm. Let, let me make that very clear. I'm not condoning it. I'm saying what I feel that I the can The anger see. is real now. The, the anger is, is like, heavy. The Manchester United fans, when I watched their protest the other week and um, like they went onto the pitch and everything else... You could see the genu genuine anger and hatred that they have for their owner, right? And ours is the same. It is the same. But what I will say is, is that that first protest, everyone was very conscious to make sure it was about the protest. Don't do something which will detract away from that. Now, the Manchester United one, because of the incidents of going on the pitch, because of people being injured or stuff like that, instantly everyone detracts away from what the protest is really about. They go, yeah, but someone did this because everyone gets tired with the same brush. Not, not mm. right to do that, but that's what they do. So in that first protest, you cannot detract away from that protest on what was created that, that evening. That's done. But now I get to the point and I feel that we're getting to the point where the anger and the hatred is so rife and so bad now, it'll probably end up spilling over into something we don't want to yeah. see. Because this is it. Because what you're doing is, is you're, this is what they're not understanding. They come from a country. Now, please, to the American supporters that watch, this is not a criticism to any Americans. And all the American some, gooners want some, Yeah, there's some very, very passionate Arsenal American supporters but American sport is a franchise alright they could pick up your club and move him to here to there and the supporters over there accept it yeah well that's they how, know that's, the, that's, yeah, how that's, that's how it's run but over here in this country these clubs through generations have been passed down and they're the life and soul they're your heartbeat you know and it's God rest his soul, but you look at Claude and one of the things that he used to always say, that in pre-season, he felt lost. He didn't have anything anymore because there was no Arsenal. He didn't know what to do with himself anymore. Like Claude, Claude gave up his marriage for Arsenal when he was, do you know what I mean? He openly <laughs> said, she told me, me or Arsenal? And he was like, bye. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That, that's how deep clubs run within, you know, the heart of people. And Claude, there's millions of fans like that all over this country and as wherever it may be that feel like that about the club. And when you have somebody that come in and does what they do, it's like taking your wife. It's like someone taking your wife off you and sleeping with your wife or something. What are you going to do? You're going to beat man up, aren't you? <laughs> you're going to go and find... You're not going to accept it, are you? Do you know what I mean? So it's, that's what the kind of comparison is, that they've come in and now they're sleeping with your wife. And they're, they're like... <laughs> <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a weird I mean, analogy, yeah. but you it's know a what I mean. Analogy, yeah. you know what? They've been doing get, it for years. Too. Yeah, exactly. And we bit, turned a blind exactly. eye. Exactly, <laughs> we've been sleeping in the spare room and allowing it. We're listening to it every night, and we're sleeping in the spare room and oh. we're letting it. And now there comes a point where you're like, no, nah, you know what? You mugged me off for too long. You're not banging my wife no more. Get out. That's what I'm trying to get that across. That is why I'm fucked up in that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's made you laugh though, isn't it? Oh my God. It's made, it's, no, it's made us laugh. But you get what I'm trying to say yeah, though, isn't it? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you know how much these clubs mean to all of us. Like at the end of the day, you've known me long enough now, Robbie, yeah? When do you think that you would ever see the day, despite all of the bad times on the, you know, the Venga part and everything else, the love was always there and it, the love will never go, don't get me wrong. But where did you ever think that you would see the day that I'm genuinely sitting there and I'm going, you know what, I don't want to go this weekend. I, I think, it's, com it. I I think just, it's compounded I'm by the fact that obviously we've been watching it. There's no fans there. I think, yeah, think Mikel Arteta is very lucky there's been no fans there. Mm. And those players, they're very lucky. Very, very lucky. Very lucky there's no fans it's there. Just, because I, if I, fans were there oh. witnessing what we're witnessing... Could you imagine we, being in the stadium watching that? Do you know how many fans I've spoken to, Arsenal fans, who said to me, Robbie, I ain't watched after games. 
Can't be bothered, man. I mean, I can't watch that crap every week. But this is the thing. This is what COVID has done. Mm. It's made people that may have not done something different on a weekend do something different. Mm. And that's the thing. It's made it, me uh, do that. Even mm. when it, when it, when it, one of the games a week or so ago or something, you turned up halfway through because you went to your boys' mm. football no, match. I didn't turn up halfway through. I was there at the start. I just let Turkish do the first Yeah, half. yeah, but, but what I mean yeah. is you got here right at the start of the game, yeah. whereas normally you're like, right, I have to be there yeah. a couple of hours before, make sure everything's right, mm. do this, do. But you're like, no, my boy's playing today. I'm, I'm going to go and watch my boy. Mm. That's what, nah, 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 nah. Yeah, this team, do that. this team don't deserve, uh, listen, you know what, let's This round. team don't deserve us. I'm this gonna, team don't deserve the support. Yeah. None of them. I'm going to round it up. What needs to happen next? Massive change all the way through. Massive change. And the one thing I will say is that if you got rid of Arteta tomorrow, but not the owners, you're just going in circles. Mm. So I, I agree. So I don't trust I, I don't them. want... I don't trust them to make I, the I next don't, I don't want Mikel to be sacked if the owners are still going to be in place. Because that don't appease the fans. That don't make us go, oh yeah, they're being proactive. They've just done something. Yeah, great, wicked. That's what Abramovich would do. Mm. But then you don't go and back the new guy. It's a never ending cycle, constant, constant, yeah, constant. Yeah, I mean, you can sack managers and for me- They're the first finishing, that need to go. Finishing 10th. They're the first that need to getting go. Getting knocked out in how we got knocked out. It's the end for Mikel Arteta for me. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, more importantly, the, 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 the owners need they to- They need be. to go first. The ownership needs to they go. They need we, to go we, first. We need a change in ownership immediately yep. these guys need to obviously it's not something that we've done it, we need a change otherwise I, I fear for Arsenal uh. I fear for the club that we love going forward in the future I fear and we've seen huge clubs fall mm. I, was, I was noting looking the other day in, in German football Schalke massive club huge club in Germany relegated. they were in the Champions League a couple of years or so ago Leeds relegated Took him ages to get. I'm not saying we're going to get relegated, but we're going to sink lower than this if we do not get this ownership of this club sorted out. And this is the thing. So it's the club has been mismanaged now for way too long. Way too long. And if something ain't done about it, it's going to fall even further. DT, thank you very much. Um, it's oh. been a very depressing podcast. Um, don't forget you can find it on all um, platforms. Thank you to Manscaped for, for, for sponsoring the podcast. Yeah, and make sure you go and send a few boxes to the players. <laughs> and um, yeah, notice I didn't even mention Sunday's game because uh, yeah, we're playing West Brom on Sunday. Don't care. Seven o'clock. Do you know what I mean? Do you know how much I don't care? Let Maitland Lars play. <laughs> Normally you're not allowed because oh. of the parent club, but I don't even care. Yeah. Honestly, I don't. I don't. I might actually go, I might That's actually paint a wall on Sunday and just sit in front of That's it. That's probably the deadest game in the Premier League. This yeah. West Brom, you're already down listen, against us, you can't do it. You remember that. in that stream, you remember in the stream, yeah? There was a part in the first half, I turned my chair around. Mm. Should have done it for the whole game. And knowing us, well, you know, pressure's off now. No pressure's on, probably go and win. That. Go away. Let's get some new management in who care about you know, new ownership in who care about Arsenal Football Club, who are proper guardians of this great football club. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next week.